What's poppin' people, it's Dante. Filming with the GoPro Mini, 1080p. 30 FPS. Exported to 720p. Walking around, Philly Philly. It's chilly and it's rainy and I'm out and about walking along the Schuylkill River Trail. Just came from South Street Bridge, looking out from the bridge. Yeah, it's a good view. Now I walk to the art museum, baby. I love this trail. Yeah, this is my uh, happy place. Um, but to find your happy place within, right? To sort of not allow anything external to give you pleasure, but to seek the sort of um, inner peace, the sort of Zen-like practice of embracing the now, you know, and just not, you know, I like to think of my brain, my mind as the TV screen, where there's like no media, there's no movie, no video game, nothing to play that's gonna give me pleasure. But to be out in the real world and to just explore, no matter the weather, this is where I thrive, right? To treat yourself like the video game character, moving through the world like uh, you own this shit. And um, yeah, this is a great way to start the day in the morning to just get right outside, go for a walk. It's probably the best way to get your mind moving to uh, sort of spark any creative thoughts. And uh, it's just healthier and better hygiene being outside. <laughs> I'd rather be outside than inside. And if you're inside, just open the window and just like let the fresh air in, I guess. I don't know. Um, you know, I'd rather walk than drive. I freaking hate driving, man. Driving is my worst nightmare. Um, just being in a car generally. It's like, you gotta force me in. You know, I'll take a flight and uh, fly anywhere, but if I wanna get somewhere like locally, yeah, you're gonna catch me walking. I'm not gonna get in a car. That is miserable. Um, yeah, 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 here we are in Philly Philly. <laughs> This is the spot, this is the place to be, the trail, to focus, to not have any distractions. You know, I've seen a few runners this morning, a few dedicated souls out there, you know. It's kind of a, yeah, interesting being out here on your own, you know, and I think to uh, sort of skip to your own beat, find your own path, move your own way, is more interesting you know even in terms of just like walking and taking you know the other path right like don't go on the major path just go under the bridge you know like just simple things like that like it's like the spice of life right to like you know just uh find beauty in the mundane things whether is the acoustics Hey, echo, echo, echo. Um, to just find beauty in the sounds, the smells, the paths that you can walk, you know, to find beauty in the mundane. What is the biggest superpower of street photography? The fact that I can find beauty in everything and fuel my lust for life through my visual acuity to things and through perceiving the world with my eyes, you know? Everything's a surprise. Maybe our dopamine receptors are fried. What can we do to fix this? Um, stop watching the TV, stop watching the news, stop watching the medias, the YouTubes, the podcasts. Yeah, anything that's sponsored, anything that's dependent on advertisements and things. Stay away. Stay away. Just don't watch it. Make your own movies. It's more satisfying. <laughs> I actually like to watch these back and to like listen to my voice, listen to my uh, thoughts, kind of, um, you know, make media. And then enjoy the media. Like, I actually like to watch my own videos. It's like, I make these because I fucking like making these. Uh, it's a really fun experience, you know? You's gonna die. Um, yeah, I like walking in the grass. It feels better, like, I, I miss having the barefoot shoes. But yeah, alas, it's raining, it's cold, whatever, like, I guess it makes sense not to wear barefoot shoes. But like genuinely, like having the barefoot uh, Vibram 5 Finger ELX shoes, if you're uh, looking for a pair of shoes, that's the only one you need. It's the best. You know, just uh, walking barefoot is the future. It's so much nicer. It feels so weird wearing these shoes now. I don't like it at all. Kind of just like loosen the laces. 
so my my toes can kind of spread out and the toe socks that kind of wrap around your individual toes seem to be wise to use with regular shoes i guess that way they separate and uh, sort of go back to their natural positioning yeah i don't like shoes man there's something about them they're just like little it's just like cramp your toes it's terrible um and i like the haptic feedback right like feeling the ground around me actually one of these like things i've realized over the year of using the shoes is it allows you to like walk with intention and you walk maybe a little bit slower because you're walking with intensity and intention and because of that it actually enhances your street photography where you can sort of i don't know it's almost like meditative and you know the slower you walk on the block the more that you see the more that you perceive right where every fleeting detail is for you to draw inspiration upon for you to create something out of nothing to sort of treat the street treat the world around you as the canvas to explore and uh yeah my passion for the street photo street photography street art is uh is uh it's a burning passion of mine you know, but uh, perhaps to consider ourselves as visual artists, you know, even using the ChatGPT, Dolly 3, making visual visualizations, you know, using your imagination and sort of just allowing anything to come to life is so groundbreaking, guys. This is the greatest invention of humanity. Um, just download it. It's freaking awesome. It's the future, baby. I love it. Just think of AI almost just like augmented thinking. Like I've been realizing it's mostly just like augmented thinking, right? It allows you to think, it allows you to ask questions. Um, no distractions, right? No more Google, no more Googling. Just chat you can see it. Yeah, it's a much more effective approach. You don't have to get bombarded with all the links, distractions and things. Um, you don't go down any rabbit holes, conspiracy theories, blah, blah. Just kind of zen the fuck out and uh, learn whatever you desire imagine anything you desire and it'll be there it's like the uh the magic genie tesla cybertruck was released you know as much as i think it's cool as shit i would be riding around that up mountains and things like that thing seems awesome but still it's like you're still in a car <laughs> you're still in a vehicle like, I guess if the vehicle dr self drives you, then it's like, okay, I guess that's a little bit better because then you can at least like not be miserable, I guess, but you're still in a car. I don't know. The self driving thing is totally the future. Like that has to be uh, normalized soon enough. Hopefully I really do hope to see it more prevalent. Um, yeah, I have an optimistic uh, thought about AI, I think. You know, it's not going to take any jobs. It's just going to change the way we do shit. Um, super view. Video game perspective. Look, I'll throw you over my shoulder. Let's go and fight. Is this how you wield a sword? No, this is how you wield a wand. Magic. You know, photography is kind of like magic. <laughs> I kind of like to consider photography as magic. I mean, the magic black box. You know, when you go high contrast black and white, you never want to go back. Everything becomes so surreal and magical and abstract. You know, what you see isn't what you get. What you get isn't what, it's what you didn't see, right? What will reality manifest to be in a photograph? That's the question that keeps your curiosity running wild where each day is it new right every day can be a new opportunity to make a new photo to continue pushing and exploring life um, through the medium and uh yeah really it's like you can photograph the same thing endlessly like it doesn't really matter where you are what time what place um, but to find endless possibility through the medium of photography will help with longevity in life generally but also with your uh with your art you know and um yeah let us not forget that photography is made with a camera um images yeah that's a different uh, topic right the images you create with ai yeah consider those images 
photos made with the camera. Um, so there's always going to be that sort of like lust for photography amongst the humanity because of the physical nature and experience of it all. You know, to go out there and to explore, to walk, to observe, and um, yeah, perhaps photography is the future of art. I love the idea of it being the most instant sort of sketch of life that you can sort of take or make and yeah it's like a, you know it's it's a realistic depiction but it's also surreal like it's like kind of like street photography is awesome because it kind of blends um the real with the surreal and yeah you never know What is that saying? Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know which one you're gonna fucking get or something. Like, I don't know what that saying is. I never watched that movie. What is it, like Forrest Gump or something? Uh, you know, I haven't watched many movies in my life. I'm not gonna lie. What is the first movie, though, that I've ever watched in my life? The Goonies. The Goonies was my first film. That's the first movie I ever watched. You know, I could probably count on only like two hands. The I watched I kind of like keeping it that way you know I haven't seen many movies maybe that's why I have this lust to keep going out there it's like I'd rather go out there and make movies I'd rather go out there and make every moment a movie than sit back and watch a movie but perhaps the Goonies is the you know early programming I had right the first movie to sort of spark my uh, lust for exploration <laughs> the the plot of the movie these uh, young boys in Astoria Oregon they find in their attic their father had all these sort of like historical artifacts about pirates and the history of the town and they wound up finding a treasure map that will allow them to then go and find uh, themselves on this adventure to find the uh, the booty the gold the riches um, they were um, sort of family friends sort of just neighborhood buddies and yeah they had their sort of nickname the goonies but um the interesting thing is like they were going to be kicked out of their neighborhood right so like it was kind of their last stand to uh make some money to allow them to keep their home and to sort of you know uh do whatever it takes to uh make ends meet so they go on this adventure underground through tunnels you know sort of uh, <laughs> being chased by the mafia this like Italian mob it's like chasing after them to find the treasure and they were like um, wanted um, people and there's like a lot of comedic relief with uh, <laughs> chunk <laughs> it's just a funny movie it's an enjoyable movie it's uh, the first movie that I've ever watched <laughs> and um, I don't know I fucking love 80s movies I think uh, the Goonies Stand By Me is the other one I remember you know the 80s movies I have uh, a passion for maybe um, or they're just like the only ones I really watched mostly yeah Stand By Me, another kind of a coming of age, sort of youth kind of story. It's a good one. Um, exploration and things, sort of similar. But yeah, those are the, uh, you know, The Goonies is the first movie that I've ever watched and I still love it. I still like, uh, if I'm on the plane or whatever, I kind of just rewatch it sometimes. Because, uh, yeah, flights be long. When you're, on the, when you're on the plane, that's like the best time, I guess, to watch a movie. Oh, no, I want this. And what is the first video game that I've, uh, that I can recall? Um, playing? Honestly? I mean, we had the Nintendo 64, the cousin's house, PlayStation 1. Yeah, maybe Croc. But when it comes to like the first series that I remember really getting into, the game that I played was probably Kingdom Hearts on the PlayStation 2. I believe on the cover you can see Sora eating one of these like sort of flower thingies. The main character from that game. Um, another sort of adventure story, Disney sort of adventure. 
yeah, that was a good game. Um, and yeah, maybe there's something about the media you consume that influence you in the way that you do life. Who knows? Maybe I'm a goonie. I'm a goonie. Hey, I see two dogs. Whoa, that's a cool... Could be a cool photo from this low angle, the dog on the hill, wow. Take a screenshot from, the, from all the way back here. Um. <laughs> there is the art museum. I believe the word museum derives from like Muse. Musea? What is the like origins of the museum? What is the word? Mauseon? I think it's like Mauseon. And I believe, you know, the first like museum, Mauseum, or like the earliest one from ancient times was the Library of Alexandria in Egypt. Conquer Alexander the Great. I believe. That library held lots of text, lots of uh, sort of ancient knowledge, but then it was burnt down mysteriously and we don't know what happened there. Um, and then I think the son of, I don't know, like one of the conquerors, emperors, kings of the time was named Philadelphus, which is like Philadelphia. And he took control and like propagated that Mauseon, that library. Yeah. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. You know, I like kind of going down the rabbit hole of uh, chat GPT. You know, you don't need to go and Google all these other things. You kind of just go on and like, what is museum? Like, I think like yesterday I was like trying to learn about Philadelphia. And then somehow I got to Philadelphus. Then it connected to like the idea of like the museum and like Library of Alexandria or something. Who knows? Maybe I just got to read a book. Um, honestly, I just yeah, I'd rather lift weights, walk around. Sometimes reading's good, but maybe uh, maybe what I got to do with reading is this is maybe where the AirPods are good. Just put some AirPods in and like walk this path and just listen. Right, like the audio book is maybe better for for me and uh, the way that I want to do things, maybe. Um, yeah, I really like uh, walking. Makes me feel good. I feel like instead of, um, like for men, like I can only speak for men matters. You know, it seems wise to to focus on fitness, not therapy, right? Like, if anything, treat your camera and uh, going out and taking pictures and walking kind of like therapy. But really, you know, fitness is the goal. Like, to put your all, all your eggs in the basket of fitness it seems to just be wise. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, fitness, not therapy. Um, here we go, up the final stretch, to the gazebo, my favorite little gazebo, look out towards the Schuylkill River, okay, upwards, elevation, motivation, in your legs, inspiration, inspiration is found in the mundane, there's no movie, no book, no game. Just observe everything. Find inspiration through experience. Fresh air. Smoke the trees. Don't smoke, don't talk. Smoke the trees, <laughs> but not those kind of trees. <laughs> Smoke the real trees. <laughs> uh, 
Beginning in the 1820s, a series of cliffside paths were constructed above the waterworks. These paths allowed visitors to climb up to the reservoir. There they enjoyed fresh air. Fresh air! Look, that's what I'm talking about, baby. And the views from the highest point near the city. They also marveled at the engineering and the architectural wonders below. I mean, really? I marvel at them. I'm in awe. It's wondrous. It's a miracle that we're here and these structures have been, have been made. <laughs> Pavilions placed throughout the site protected visitors from the elements, provided scenic overlooks, and added architectural interest. I mean, really, the architecture is incredible. By 1870, the existing curvilinear path was installed, linking the engine house and south garden to the Mercury Pavilion, rustic pavilion, distribu distribution arch, arc, and reservoir. But interesting and curious as the machinery is, Fairmount would not be so attractive had it not something else to offer. It is, in truth, one of the very prettiest spots the eye can look upon. 1832. I mean, this is just a beautiful view. This really is a beautiful space. Look at the train moving along. There's a beautiful fountain, sculptures. You know, even on this rainy day, look at that art museum, the fog and the mist over the skyline. Everything and anything can become photographable and everything is beautiful through the observations and your visual acuity to things. Hey, I didn't get the whole leaf. And um, the architecture they're describing are these sort of mansions and pillars and things that are along the banks. We also have a view of the boathouses. There's a mansion up on the hillside, the waterfall, this path. That bridge made of stone, these rock formations. Um, to elevate yourself to a position like this and to have this view each day is a blessing. You know, I'm very grateful to have these views. I'm very grateful to have a place to sleep at night. Meat in my fridge, it's all I need. And my camera in my pocket, this is a. Uh, looking like a beautiful day i mean embrace the elements embrace the change embrace chaos and uh embrace the spirit of play incredible views let's get the rico let's actually go back to regular exposure compensation Let's incorporate this pillar in the photo. I like the lighting here. Maybe this is good. P mode, single point autofocus, point and shoot. Right. Don't limit your photography. Don't just be stuck on one uh, project, topic. Kind of just expand the possibilities. Right. Repetition. I photograph the same spot each day. But I find new ways to operate. that path glistening with the rain maybe a vertical is good because then I can get the sort of trees in the top of the frame I also have these sort of lines on the back of the LCD screen so if I want to make more intentional compositions yeah using the Rico is a, a breeze you don't need a viewfinder the LCD screen is good enough All right. let's be careful this time this is gonna be puddles and wet surfaces. Don't want to slip. That would be bad.
Oh, the train. Beautiful.